Hi everyone. In the previous part, we had gone through food intoxication. Now, in this part, we will discuss about food infections. First, let's have a quick review of foodborne illness. So, the foodborne illness is being categorized into two things. One is food intoxication, another one is the food infections. So what is meant by food intoxication? The foodborne illness caused by or due to ingestion of toxin or toxicant and we have seen the uh, majorly two types of intoxications there the toxin and what is its uh, uh, effect on symptoms and detection and the prevention measures in the previous part of these two diseases majorly and these are all the food intoxications different types of uh, intoxications then in this part we will discuss about the food infections so food infection so what do you mean by food infection food infection refers to the foodborne illness caused by entry of microorganisms into the body that means any body through the ingestion of contaminated foods and the reaction of the body to their presence or to their metabolites is being termed as food infection and these are the several examples of the food infections like salmonellosis, shigellosis, gastroenteritis caused by vibrios gastroenteritis caused by Arsenia, gastroenteritis caused by Campylobacter and food illness caused by foodborne illness caused by viruses or parasites. So in this part majorly we are going to deal with the solenoid losses and shigil losses. So let's start with the first one solenoid losses. So this is all the definition that I already told you. So food infections refers to the entry of microorganisms into the body by the ingestion of contaminated foods and the reaction of the body to their presence or to their metabolites is being termed as food infections. Next, uh, coming to the solmonellosis, losses, as I told you, solmonellosis losses mainly occurs by the ingestion of uh, viable cells of these solmonella species in the contaminated food or through the contaminated food. It is a most frequently occurring good. Uh, bacterial food infections. When we compare the other, the solmonellosis is the most frequently occurring bacterial food infection. There are large number of species or syllogical types of species of salmonella. So we are having uh, various types of salmonella species. Syllogically also we have many types. So coming to the organism, salmonellosis or uh, gram negative bacilli and it's a non-spore forming Okay, bacillus means obviously the shape will be rod and this is able to ferment the glucose with gas production. And these all uh, biochemical uh, characters are, uh, will be essential for the identification of the organisms in the biochemical test. So these uh, salmonella species or catalase positive oxidase negative and generally motile with peritrichus plasula. So this is very important. These are motile with peritrichus plasula. So the plasula will be present throughout the body. Okay, then those type of uh, um, plasula are being termed as peritrichus plasula. And then coming to the sources of infection. Uh, how, what can be the source of infection? Obviously the food contaminated with this salmonella species. But majorly, you are going to find this uh, in the, uh, what we call it as uh, eggs, where foods made with the eggs are not sufficiently cooked or pasteurized may carry the live organisms. Okay, and then a majority of uh, outbreaks, food or uh, bond infections outbreaks are being uh, because of this salmonella species on. Then coming to the pathogenesis that means how it is going to cause a disease or infection in a host is going to be termed as uh, classified into two categories one is enteritis another one is the 
systemic lysis. So salmonella are responsible for a number of different clinical sy syndromes grouped broadly into enteritis and systemic disease. So coming to the enteritis, due to the gastrointestinal infections are predominantly associated with this uh, serotypes which occur widely in animal and human. So we find this type of uh, gas, uh, enteritis that is gastrointestinal infections both in animals and the humans. The incubation period uh, of per salmonella enteritis is typically between uh, uh, 6 to 48 hours. So it is of uh, 6 to 48 hours. Symptoms include. So what are the symptoms that we can find in this gastroenteritis are mild fever. So obviously if you get any infection the first is, uh, indication of by your body is mild fever which is a, a very good defense mechanism which is showing by your body is mild fever and then nausea feel of vomiting sensation and vomiting abdominal pain and then you are going to have a diarrhea last for few days and illness is usually self-limiting but can be more severe in susceptible groups so generally you, you will get recovered within few days but if it uh, some cases it is going to be of very severe in condition this is enteritis that is intestinal upset is going to be of uh, occurring the major factor here then come in the systemic disease uh, obviously you know about this term called as typhoid isn't it? so why got typhoid all these things we may heard it often so that is going to be called as systemic disease so typhoid and paratyphoid bacilli caused by the salmonella typhi and salmonella paratyphi a b okay c, uh, c or different types of uh, typhi where or which are responsible for causing your typhoid fever and paratyphoid and typhoid fever uh, has an incubation period of about 30 sorry 3 to 56 days usually between 10 and 20 days so generally we are going to have from 3 to 56 days that means somewhere you have taken the food uh, contaminated food and you had gone after 10 days or 20 days you may have the symptoms of this typhoid so you may not uh, able to recollect whether i had taken the contaminated food or not but uh, you are going to have this uh, systemic disease called as typhoid or paratyphoid so what are the symptoms that you are going to have when you are having this typhoid fever obviously we know that typhoid itself is going to have the fever then uh, a severe headache will be uh, one of the indications then abdominal tenderness you feel of so uh, tenderness is not a pain constipation unable to defecate properly and the appearance of red spots on the uh, on the body so these all things is going to be the major symptoms of finding the uh, fever okay sorry this systemic disease then how you are going to detect this whole salmonella losses, this uh, food infection. So the, uh, coming to the detection, obviously the first or basic procedure for the examination of foods for salmonella consists of predominant uh, pre-enrichment and uh, enrichment in broth, streaking and detection on selective differential media. So by these all medias, we can isolate the organism, we can detect it and we can find it out. Then we can also have in biochemical tests, I told you, there are certain biochemical tests which are being uh, useful in finding out whether the or this organism is a salmonella or not. So by those we can have this confirmation and then we can also go for serological typing uh, or phase typing and by rapid uh, procedures such as RIA that is radio immunoassay or ELISA enzyme linked immunosorbent assay and DNA hybridization assays are also being used as a rapid procedures nowadays to identify this uh, infection that is typhoid or paratyphoid. Not only that, the enteritis can also be identified. Then, what are the prevention measures that we are supposed to follow? to avoid this solving losses. So the best is avoid the contamination of the 
food with salmonella from sources such as diseased human beings animals and carriers carrying the organism so destruction of the organism in foods by proper heating by proper cooking pasteurization by all these techniques we can have the destruction of the organism then prevention of the growth of salmonella in foods by adequate refrigeration or by other means so by following all these preventive measures uh, we hope so that the salmonella won't grow in that conditions and we can prevent our food without contamination of this salmonella so just uh, look at this one i told you it's a peritrichus flagella so this is how it looks like throughout the body it is having its uh, excuse me throughout the body it is going to have the hair like substances uh, sorry hair like plasma so that's why we call it as peritrichus plasma so the symptoms of uh, this salmonella type is going to be of uh, uh, diarrhea as i told you intestinal inflammation warm thing and large liver abdominal cramp cramps so these all going to be of more severe when the patient is not treated after finding out the disease of this one okay so that's all about the salmonella cysts then we'll move to the second type of uh, food infection that is a uh, shigellosis so this shigellosis is also being called as bacillus dysentery what do we call it as bacillus or bacillary dysentery and this is how they look like bacillary dysentery and this illness is often called the flith disease what we call it as flith disease the genus shigella was discovered as a cause of bacillary dysentery by the japanese microbiologist kiyoshi shiga in 1898 in the 1898 kiyoshi shiga is a is a microbiologist who uh, dis discovered this uh, bacillary dysentery is because of a bacteria called shigella species next this shigellosis Uh, as i told you oftenly called as sorry here is a flith f i l t h not fifth it is a flith f i l t h flith the disease because it is associated with the uh, poor uh, what we call it as poor personal hygiene and uh, sanitation so that's why this is called the flith disease the illness is often prominent in areas where there are large groups of people so when there is a large group of people so obviously we will come to have this shigellosis the the disease could be acquired through travel to a foreign areas also okay and the mortality rate appears to be greatest in infants and old people in general uh, the normal age people won't be of affected more with the shigel losses but coming to infants and uh, old people they are going to have the more mortality rate then shigel loss coming to the organism shigel loss or the members of the family enterobacteriaceae so they are non motile so coming to their characters non motile they don't have any flagella here so they are non motile gram negative rods means obviously bacilli shape non spore forming catalase positive oxidase negative and facultative anaerobes and they produce acid but usually no gas from glucose but in the salmonella we have seen they ferment the glucose along with the production of gas isn't it okay next they are typical mesophiles and grow at an optimal temperature of 10 to 45 degrees centigrade and heat sensitive compared to the uh, other members of the family so this is very heat sensitive that's why we often having a light uh, heat also they are going to be destroyed so we are not oftenly exhibiting with this shigellosis infection and this uh, genus is going to have uh, different types of uh, species okay like uh, shigella dysentery is one of the type shigella flexinary shigella boindi uh, sorry boidi and shigella sonieri so these are the four species of uh, shigella genus so where we are having and we are discussing about only one type that is shigella dysentery
and then come in the sources of infection what can be the sources of infection the main source of shigella is normally a symptomless a symptomless human carrier involved in the preparation of food so the one who is cooking is majorly responsible for causing this food infection either it may be salmonella typhi that is a typhoid or this shigellosis so both are the human carrier who are going to have involved in the preparation of the food is mainly the source of infection then the foods have been involved in most outbreaks or those that are handled the most handled the most these are the foods like salads of potato tuna shrimp and chicken the ingredients may be clean but during the preparation the salad is contaminated by hand manipulation or mixing that's why i told you the handlers of the food are mainly responsible the organism readily multiply in most food moist foods so uh, moist food means the one which is having a more quantity of water is going to be treated as a moist food those are held at room temperature and at these in these foods they are readily able to multiply more in number so that's all about the sources of infection then come in the detection so how do you detect it so this shigella includes the detection or the methodology involved with this shigella includes enrichment plating and differentiation to detect the organism then we'll come to see logical reactions colistin typing dna evaluation or aids to further separate the shigella which type of the species it is then coming to the rapid technologies like immuno assays uh, which detect the virulence marker antigen and on the pcr uh, to detect the virulence plasmid by dna dna hybridization so these are all have been have also been applied to identify the shigella then what is the prevention that we are going to have so these are the symptoms that we are going to have then what are the preventive measures that we are supposed to follow so foodborne outbreaks the same thing as i told you foodborne outbreaks of shigella losses are caused by mishandling of food a high standard of personal hygiene or by food handlers especially i told you this is being transmitted uh, or getting because of the food handlers so personal hygiene of the food handler should be there that is washing hands after using the toilet not handling food during illness or diarrheal symptoms okay and sanitation of the uh, premises with proper cooking and refrigeration of foods help in the prevention of shigella losses just two things the one who is handling the cooking of the food should be of having the good hygienic conditions and as well as the sanitation maintenance surrounding the uh, cooking process so if these two are going to be maintained properly that's uh, all we can avoid this shigellosis infection so an overview of the symptoms of for this infections obviously vomiting diarrhea headache and then abdominal pain nausea muscular pain fever dehydration so these are the few signs of food poisoning uh, that we are going to have when we are having the contaminated food consumption so that's all about the food infections so with this we have finished our foodborne illness thank you